Mics are hot. Don't touch my red button. Mics are hot. Oh, the red button's been touched. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Race car spelled backwards is still race car. This is the race car spelled backwards podcast. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brad, and with me, as always, is Jamie. And this is the race car spelled backwards podcast episode 41. We'll get that out of the way early. It's a surprise episode because we got bored not recording. Yeah, we took two weeks off. If you remember a week ago, we said we were not going to record for two weeks. We made it one week and now we're recording. We're like, there's so much that's happened and I'm bored not recording. I mean, really not a lot has happened as far as NASCAR news goes, but it was just very awkward not having something to do on Mondays. Like, other than work, I mean. Yeah, we had work. Actually, I was just doing work. You were out of town. I last, was. Last week. You were in Texas, so. When, yeah, Texas is a big state. Yeah, he was in the Houston, Texas region. You, have you noticed everyone in Texas will let you know it's a big state? Yeah, everything's bigger in Texas. Well, you know, I noticed I, that I needed. the fail. <laughs> I needed larger pants after eating in Texas constantly. Some good food. I don't know if it was good, but the quantity was a lot. She had a good. Trip. It was a good. It was good food. We went to a fancy Italian restaurant. And then my Italians. Mm-hmm. And I thought they. You had some pizza. I had some pizza, but I thought it was like personal size, and they brought out like this twenty-inch pizza and put it right in front of me since I ordered it. I was a little embarrassed. I still only had three slices. Did you share it with anybody else? Nobody else wanted it. it made you stare at it the whole time. And I said, hey, can I get a box for this? And I, At least they had pizza. The last Italian restaurant we went to did not serve pizza. And you argued with her. I did, didn't I? <laughs> it didn't make any sense. You even asked her to go back in the back and ask somebody if they would make a pizza. But still. I volunteered to make the pizza. Apparently, they didn't have the dough All they to make the pizza. Double zero cupatino. So we're recording in the in the camper today. Yeah, the darn barn is cold. Sub sub freezing. Sub cool, as we say in air conditioning. We're gonna do a sub cooling. It was thirty eight degrees in the barn when I checked on it. So I brought the space heater and shoved it in the camper and it actually works out quite well. I think the camper might be better insulated than the barn. <laughs> Dang sure warmer right now than that <laughs> barn. So The big news, I guess, I was just looking on Twitter on NASCAR, and it's got the most popular driver award, the current top 10 running. Like, there's even a – does anybody really think Chase Elliott's not going to win? He's going to win every year until he Well, I don't think he's going to win, but he's still going to win. He's going to win. It's not rigged. He's just – Well, somebody on Twitter said no matter what he voted, it came out Chase. Yeah, yeah. He's just – He's complaining. They're counting all these votes up in Arizona, so we're not going to know know for three weeks who won. It might be after Daytona 500, we know. Probably next year. So right now it's Seabell, Ryan Blaney. Are they getting uh, Reverend Warnock and Herschel Walker to count the votes in Arizona? Probably. (laughs) Can they go past three? So we're in a a runoff here between Christopher (laughs) Bell. Not a runoff. Ryan Blaney. Bowman, Kyle Busch, Chastain, Chase Elliott, Kevin Harvick, Larson, Truex Jr., and Joe Lagana. Which this is how I know it's wrong. I mean, so who would you vote for out of that group? Out of this group, let's eliminate Chase because we know no matter what you say, Chase is coming out. Like you might mouth Harvick, but Chase right. will come out of your mouth. You'll go Har Elliott. I'll tell you who I'm. I'll tell you you. So we can't vote for Chase. Yeah. I would so, go, you're number two because I'd vote for Chase, too. It would be legit, too. Ross Chastain. Because wow. this is why. That's a big turnaround for tell, you. That's 180 degrees. I can tell you why. Because he, he gave us storylines all season long. Well, that's true. All season long. And he never backed off 
Well, I, I can't say that because I actually I think he did back off being who he was. Like the rough, rowdy, bumping Ross Chastain, he kind of backed off that for a little while mid season and then came back right around the chase time. So, but I just I like him. He he stayed true to who he was. I just think at some point he needs to realize he's a superstar and Trackhouse needs to start treating him like a superstar. Like really. Ross, yeah, I, I do think – I mean, Ross just pulled a move that will be talked about. Our kids – you know, my grandkids will talk about the Ross Chastain move. So that that boosted his status. That boosted his value. Like, that boosted his sponsorship value. You know how much more he's worth the sponsors now? Oh, tremendous amount of money. I showed Fuck my, it's the money. I showed my preacher – the video clip of Ross Chastain and explained to him the importance of the move, like why he did it. He had no option to win the check to get. And what races does round. he watch? He None. calls out like X six seventeen and <laughs> watch the kids try to find it quicker than each other. Yeah, so he doesn't really watch racing. But I show, I explained to him and then I showed him the move and I mean even he was. I don't impressed. even know if you need an explanation. That's just whack. Well, I mean, to know why Ross did it. Like, Ross didn't do it to win the race. Walt, Ross made that move to make it to the next round, to, to have a chance to race for a championship. For the first time all day, he dropped a fifth gear or went up to fifth gear and just sent it. Nobody had been fifth in fifth gear, gear all day. Fifth gear, closed his eyes, let go of the steering wheel, and rode it out. Help. I mean, to me... That that's why that's the move of the year. I give it to him. It's the move of the century. I mean, <laughs> compare it to the pass in the grass with Dale Senior. That wasn't even a pass in the grass. That was like that was a pass on your ass. That was I'm wrecking. <laughs> I'm wrecking and passing your ass. Yeah, it didn't work when Dale Junior tried to go through the grass at Texas after we all sat through like a thirty hour rain delay. Then lap two, Dale Junior cuts the corner, Rex. That really ruined that night. Well, I mean, what are you going to do? Well, you're mad at Dell Jr. anyway. He keeps yelling at me, dude. Dell Jr. annoyed me for five and a half hours when I rode, when we rode up to Charlotte. That he was, was yelling at me today. I changed the voice. You did? I did. I, I would just turn it off. I'm like, what the? Why are you yelling at me, Jr.? Make, Stop! Make a U-turn. Make a Lego U-turn, man. You finally made it. Damn! It, it's, it's, so I put his voice on ways. And I'm a fan of Dale Jr., but you know what? I was arguing with him. When we went to Charlotte, we were trying to listen to the Dale Jr. download with the Waze Dale Jr. voice. So it's like Dale I, talking on the download, and then it goes, hey, up here, you're going to want to make a left, buddy. You missed your turn. Damn. You missed your turn. Turn around, you <laughs> idiot. I think they need to get like a door bumper clear. Get all three of the guys to work together. And you have all three of them screaming at you on ways. What an idiot. Brett's a dumbass. All right. We like you, Brett. Oh, yeah. We like the whole Dirty Mo Media crowd. All right. So, I got some gifts for you. You ready? I'm ready. So, the first gift. So, this week, the theme of the show this week, on the as far as the reviews go... And you'll probably notice as we read through some of these reviews is Thanksgiving Karens or Turkey Day Karens, Black Friday Karens, whatever you want to call them. Oh, I got that man Karen, too, we can read. Oh, yeah, I got some man Karen. What's a man Karen? Is that an Earl? It's, someone said it was a Ken. Or Todd. Someone in my house. Well, the wife or kids. I like Todd. I just like man Karen. Yeah, man Karen. Or Todd. Todd. Todd work. Ken. If you're a listener, your name's Todd. Brian, Sorry. Brian. Really, Brad is what I've heard people saying, but I'm not using that one because that's my name. <laughs> that's a man, Karen, Brad? No. I'm not coining that one today. <laughs> okay. All right. So the first gift up is a Power Up 2.0 paper airplane conversion kit. Now, this is, it looks like a little motor with a pole that runs from the front to the back. With a propeller on it. This goes inside of a paper airplane. You charge it up and it takes off. 
are supposed to take off. It says the Power Up 2.0 Paper Airplane Conversion Kit transforms your plain old paper airplanes into full-on flying machines that can easily shatter the world record for the longest time any paper airplane has ever stayed airborne. Do they ever. tell you how long that is? Flight time. A single charge gives your paper planes enough juice to stay airborne for 30 seconds. Maybe more depending on the weather conditions and your throwing technique. A quick charge. Want to fly again? The Power Up 2.0 Paper Airplane Conversion Kit is designed to finish charging in up to 20 seconds. It's crash proof. Fly with absolutely zero worries. The Power Up 2.0 Airplane Conversion Kit is specifically engineered to withstand various conditions. That sounds like something I might want. It looks pretty neat. So this was a Amazon early Black Friday deal. That's where some of these items came from on this week. So I figured to start off with Thanksgiving Karen's. What better way to start off than with Karen? Oh, geez, there's Karen. Karen Nelson gave this a one out of five. She jumps right into the zero star trap with, I wish Amazon had a zero star rating. That's because not a rating, though. A zero I, is not a rating. You can't. You gave it no stars. Like, it's a one. One is zero. If, yeah, one sucks. There's no worse than one. So if you give it a one, you have officially given it the worst possible review you can, you can give it. But to be a Karen... You almost had to say this, really. She didn't even spell Karen right. Or maybe we don't spell it right. K-R-I-N. I mean, it is Car-N. It's K-A-R-I-N. Car-N. It's K-R-N. Karen. K-R-N. Karen. K-R-N. You sure it's not Karen? Maybe. I knew a Karen one. Maybe it is Karen. Ah, but for today, it's she's Karen. a Karen. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We're going to go with Karen. I have no idea. So it says, I would not, for the life of it, even try to even get it into the air. Well, how does she know it's going to work if she's not willing to throw it in the air? I, I have no idea. That makes it would not, for the life of it, even try to even get into the air. Oh, maybe she's saying no matter what she did, it wouldn't go into the air. So she says, I followed the directions exactly, cut the rudders to exact height, and even flew it into the wind. Just like it told me to. Yes, it did come with everything, but completely did the opposite of what it was supposed to do. All it did was fly for two seconds and then nosedive straight to the ground. Sounds like she didn't do something right. The propeller on the back isn't even pro properly, atta properly attached properly. Boy, that's a tongue <laughs> twister. It just slides on and just gets knocked right off when it hits yeah, the it ground. But... You're on the ground. Gravity rules. Remember, save your money. Do not buy this piece of crap. Hold it. <laughs> Look, at Look at Karen not spelling peace right. She peace. spelled it P-E-A-C-E. -E. Peace and love. What is crap. she? You know what she is? She's one of them liberals that cruise around like she's all liberal and loves everybody, but is hating on everybody while she drives her BMW, flicking people off and screaming at Starbucks employees for not putting enough chocolate chips in her latte. So she's like a liberal Trumper. Isn't that how most of them are? Oh, crazy. The, the cow. I mean, look at look at Pelosi. She crazy. Yeah, she she cry cry. I mean, I mean totally cry cry. She's like one hundred and eighty three years old. Because like, all right, man, I'm not going to talk about my politics, but she's Speaker of the House, and she just resigned as Speaker of the House. And she's going to lose Speaker of the House. So she didn't want to lose, did she? So she resigned for a month. That's why she resigned, so she didn't lose it. That cause she cry cry. She's a Karen. Karen Pelosi. That's what I'm going to call her now. Karen Pelosi. I like that. And just to be even, that Christian Lake or whatever her name is in Arizona. Christy Lake. Well, didn't she run for governor or something? Wasn't that a night show host? She was like a news. Or that Carrie Lake. Carrie Lake, is that who ran for governor? Ricky Lake, that's the one. Oh, well, Ricky maybe Lake. Karen Ricky Lake ran for governor of Arizona. I think Ricky Lake was the talk show host. Wasn't that the same person? They said she was from TV. Maybe. I, I think that was Ricky Karen. Lake. I thought that was Carrie Lake. That's Karen Ricky Lake. Oh, maybe. So. I think it's the same person. 
I have no idea, like truthfully, because I'm not from that area. Have you ever been to that area? <laughs> no. No? About she doesn't to, she don't look right to me. We're about to drive through, right? Yeah, we are going through on our cannonball run. Not going to be able to get out. We had to roll the window down and say, hey. Did she win? Are they still counting in Arizona? We yeah, might need to be counting. careful. There's, well, if we get pulled over for speeding, we're like, no, I need you to add this up and yeah. make sure. Can you send this really to speeding. count our speed? Can I want to? I want a recount of my speed. I believe we were going the limit, officer. We are in a Prius. Are you sure it was us? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was that other car that came by really fast. Well, you have the Cannonball Run stickers on your door. Yes, what officer. It? Yes. What is that? Is that a? Uh, uh, what do they call that stuff? A demand ID state? Can we refuse to give them ID? Yeah. You don't need ID to vote. Do you need ID to drive? I don't know. There's weird rules. And that's in Arizona, right? Yeah, we'll have to look that up. Right to ID? Search well, and seizure? Well, oh, that's good. a seizure. That's where you're falling on the ground, jerking around, isn't it? <laughs> yes. That's, that's, yeah. it's, it's the same word, though, isn't it? Search and seizure? Is that the same as a seizure? <laughs> It's different meanings. <laughs> That's when they shoot you with the old, uh, the electric gun it's and kinda you have like, a seizure. It's it's a different meaning. Same word, different meaning. Is it spelled this thing? <laughs> you want me to tell you how to spell? <laughs> well, I don't know. Somebody asked me to count chairs the other day, and I just looked down. And that was about like 25. No, nah, it was like 35, 40. <laughs> I mean, until you've got a lot of chair counting experience. I mean, well, none of us did. I just started counting and got tired of counting halfway through and just, yeah, 25. They're all brown know. chairs stuck in the back seat of a car. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell which one's, where one starts and where one ends. I guess you could stack 10 and measure it, and then you'd know forever <laughs> how many fit in, say, a 48-inch square. In a Passat. In a Passat. What is a Passat? Car. Who makes Passat? Honda? Is that a Toyota that or a Honda? Honda? I have no idea. I don't know a lot today, do I? It sounds like a twisted Prius. Passat. Passat. Oh, that's a Volkswagen, isn't it? It sounds it's like... It's a German car. I it, should know that. It sounds like some English dude calling you a pissant. He's a Passat. It's, it's, like it's like the woman at the 24 Hours of Daytona that called you a peasant. Be yeah. like, it'd be like her going, you passant. <laughs> I wonder if she's going to be there this year. You peasant, you're nothing but a passant. <laughs> As she gets on the general admission bus. Yeah, you're riding, <laughs> yeah. You're riding the tram with us, lady. <laughs> you twat. Get on, Karen. I should stop. I don't even know what twat is. <laughs> but British people say it all the time. That and bollocks. I think that's balls, isn't it? Bloody hell. You twat bollocks. <laughs> that's probably out of context. <laughs> It wouldn't be the first time you were taken out of context. No. All right, so Candace gave it a one out of five. She says, don't make the prop out of glass. I knew the prop would break the second I looked at it. They give you an extra prop because they know it will break. Go, Got three flights now going to the trash. Why would you make a prop out of glass? I, they didn't make it out of glass. I looked at it. It's plastic. plastic. Stephen F. said it's a waste. He gave it a one out of five. First time I threw it in the air, it <laughs> came back in three pieces. Hmm. And he spelled peace correctly, Karen. Yes, Karen. Good God. Great googly moogly. Brandy gave it a one out of five, said it's an absolute waste of money. Only two templates for the same airplane. But can't you copy it on your copier at home? Her son, son. Oh, she she wasted her two templates before copying. One of the things I got out of here, so like she says, Brandy says at the end of her review, she says the airplane's a complete waste of money. My son was not happy. Grandma Rev said it broke before the kids got to put it together. The kids were extremely disappointed. And so how then, much is this, Brad? Like twelve bucks. Stop your bitching, people. Yeah, I mean it's. I mean, you're gonna buy that on candy bars at the Dollar Tree. What? I'm, but like, here's another. Georgia G gave it a one out of five. She said it's inadequate. The parts didn't fit together. Her nephew was very upset. So, see, I go with hers. Georgia yeah, G, that's a good review. But you got kids. My son was unhappy. My grandkids were disappointed. Kids aren't disappointed. This is a this is a piece of crap stocking stuff for that you're buying to make yourself feel better well, that you gave your grandkid or son 18 gifts. 
and we're talking a paper airplane here you're gonna fold it and this is just to be clear this is the power up 2.0 there's a 3.0 and a 4.0 oh, if improved? you really loved your kids you'd you buy them the 4.0 so you're cheap bastard if you're getting a 2.0 the 4.0 is remote controlled you can turn left and right with it wow you can guide it so um these are my favorite so you know they have reviews from other countries on here on amazon and you can translate them to english and then when you read them it sounds like these people are the dumbest idiots in the world so it says i don't know if this is one of them like i just know my favorite reviews to read are the ones that are translated from another language into english so i'm going to go with simone Rezik. what you think i'm close on that she's german would you go Simone Rezik? Yeah, that sounds right. Razik. Re Rezik? Reziki? Are you sure she's German? Yeah, because it says... It's Simone German? It says reviewed in Germany. Oh, I, yeah. It says my I don't know how to read. My 13-year-old son discovered this product. The price was to get worse, so I ordered it. I'm, I'm assuming she means the price was going to go up. Also... This motorized toy is once again a severe disappointment like most all remote-controlled aircraft in general. With the word target breakpoint, my toenails curled. All toenails curled? All I want a woman to tell me her toenails curled. Good. Not a muddy. She's my wife, basically, if she's listening. <laughs> she's probably going, yeah, that's never happened. <laughs> Let's see. She says that this was this was very disappoint. The disappointment of her child was the worst part of this whole toy. You know, if you're gonna buy your kid a twelve dollar toy on Prime, and he's disappointed, maybe you should spend twenty. All right. So the next item, Jamie, is one that um, I would never wear. I'm just. I don't care what i look like i would not wear this but thanks to heather on twitter she's the one who wow who mentioned something about men's girdles so the slimming men's underwear girdle compression underwear these are boxers with it's like they go up to your tetes spandex that <laughs> yeah they go all the way up to your chesticles, <laughs> your chesticles. <laughs> and whatever gut you have I'm assuming they're meant to hold that in. That dude's, I hope that's an ad picture. He's trying to look sexy stuffed into that weird tube. <laughs> it looks like he has his boxers pulled up to his armpits. It looks like somebody gave this dude a wedgie. Oh, I ain't this way, but you, you think with that tight latex thing like there, he should at least have a ball budge. Bulge. That's not a man. Maybe it's just the printer. That ain't a dude. That's a dude. I've seen women in yoga pants with <laughs> bigger bulges. Bigger bulges than that. Huh. Maybe it's computer animated. I mean, generated. They like take it out. Could be. So it's more than a boxer brief. This extra high waisted piece includes two layers of our signature DuraFit moderate compression fabric to shape your entire torso adding definition to the abs and sides it also offers great back support to improve your posture all day your posture <laughs> <laughs> that said prostate but <laughs> well, a little it looks like it's so tight it might cut off your prostate along the top of the boxer briefs is an anti-slip grip lining for stay put support so it guarantees love handles yeah uh -huh. The length of the legs is perfect for chafe prevention. Well, chafe in your what? The open, you don't have any man bulges there. The open in the front is for easy wear. Well, how do you pee in that thing? <laughs> That's the open in the front. Is there a zipper? I think it's just got a ball cut out. It looks like a ball crusher. No, dude. I think there's a hole there and your nuts just drop through them. It looks like those things at the gravel pit that they pulverize gravel <laughs> with. I mean, that's a ball crusher. So these are tummy shaper shorts. I don't know. I, I don't Build know. your confidence. Slimming belly bulges is no longer a difficult problem while you wear this tummy shaper. 
It will hold your stomach in while slimming your waist down at least a full size. Dude, I just... So you're going to run out and get smaller pants just because you fit in this tube? It's like... What are those things they used to wear back in like the 1600s on like Pirates of the Caribbean? Chastity belts? No. <laughs> they put them, they like, it's got the rope to tie them up, ties around their waist. Is that a girdle? Pants? <laughs> is that what it's called? Oh yeah, a, gir- a woman's girdle. Sashay. Wasn't that a girdle? I'm assuming. The Victorian thing? I thought it had like, like a special the name. hourglass look. Well, Brandon Kemp said... Did not do what it advertised. The weakest part of the fabric is the gut area. What do you so, think these dudes look like? So if you have a it? small belly, this will force everything to the front and give you a larger belly, making you look pregnant. Um. So one dude posted a picture and looked like he got a big old beer belly. Doesn't look like it helped either. Well, even in the even in their promo pictures, it doesn't look like this helps. This is Spanx for men. That's all it is. Um, oh, there it is. A corset. Corset. Yeah, that's it. Look at that from the 1800s. Why Earp would be happy. So this is a corset with... I'll be your huckleberry. This is a corset attached to boxers, basically. Made out of spandex. That guy in the picture don't have a huckleberry. He couldn't be your huckleberry. Well, maybe he does have berries. Mm-hmm. That's why he can't see his huckleberries. Kel said it's a waste of time and money. Kel says, I'm a police officer. Does that kill your burn? No. No. Kel says, I'm a police officer. Why would a police officer wear this? I'm highly overweight from all the donuts that I eat. <laughs> oh, God. And this product is for back support. <laughs> this product would work great if it didn't twist, bend, or move at all. One hour into my shift, the legs rolled up and the waist rolled down. It was very uncomfortable and constricting. Huh. Nailene says it rides up and rolls down. That's a man? Is yes. this bisexual? Well, maybe Nailene. There we go again. What do you call it? We're unisex. Isn't that everybody? I'm they're trying to be inclusive here. Gender neutral. It's unisex, isn't it? Gender neutral. No, no. Did they outlaw unisex? Unisex sounds like a unicycle. Who mean, wants to ride a unicycle? That's one wheel. So it can't be unisex. There's two. Two sexes, one wheel on a unicycle, so it can't be unisex. That's one. A style in which men and women look and dress in a similar way. Unisex. Unisex, not unicycle. I don't even know what a unicycle is. <laughs> I'm thinking of Uno. Oh, the one wheel thing? You put up your butt and go yeah, cruising so around how, in? How can unisex be for two and unicycle only have one wheel? But it'll go up. Every gender's but a unicycle wheel. Just, but think it's about unisex. it. Think about it. One wheel, unicycle. Two sexes, unisex. It makes no sense. How can Una be Does one? Does that make it non-binary? How can Una be one and two? I think it's non-binary. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, look. I googled unisex, and now it's called intersex. <laughs> That- oh, hold it. <laughs> Never mind. We're going down a deep path you better, here. You better get off Pornhub over there. Now it is on lsna.org. Oh, the Intersex Society of America. They have a, a lobby group in Congress. <laughs> this, oh, my goodness. This dude's name is Nakewash. <laughs> Nakwash or Nakewash. He I says, there is no pocket for the man parts, and there is absolutely no stretch in that area either. Bits and pieces, dude. So if you have more than bits and pieces, this is not for you. Check out um, Paul Sherman. Paul Sherman posted a picture of himself. Of his ball sack? Of his pregnant... Paul Sherman... <laughs> oh my God, I see Paul it Sherman looks pregnant. I mean, it looks like he's got man boots, So another too. one of the dudes said that this, like... He needs a brawl with that. He says it pushes everything to the center, making your gut look bigger. So maybe that's why Paul K. Sherman here <laughs> gave it a one out of five. It says it absolutely does nothing for me. It's just big underwear. Like, no. no. If, you're, if you swallow a basketball... This is not going to help. That guy figured out how to get a sex change for what? How much are these? So the, here's one that... 100 bucks? I did, I couldn't do the math here. So John gave it a one out of five. He says four for a five-year-old kid. Terrible sizing. 
this thing is so small. I wear a 2XL shirt. This is a 4XXXX. Come on, for the dwarf? For a hobbit? For a five-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god my circulation is gone i'm turning <laughs> he's turned into a Oompa i'm Loompa. turning purple it's, it's cutting me in half the he's leg like, part's okay the belly part it is like for a skinny supermodel at 411 that don't need it i'm going to go numb remember on charlie and the chocolate factory where the kid they said don't touch that candy he did and he turned purple and they rolled him off that's this guy, John. Yeah. He's a purple Oompa Loompa. It just cracked me up. Like, You know what's crazy? Like, it, this one, 13 people found helpful. That means 13 people were considering this and took the time to say, yes, it's helpful. Marvin said don't buy it because it doesn't have a fly as advertised. Dude, you're going to wet yourself. Oh, I sat next on, on the flight home. Someone smelled like pee. Like pee, like cat pee or like human, human pee? pee, cat pee. I was sitting there. They got nervous because I'm sniffing myself all over the place <laughs> until I realized it wasn't me. So I looked at the guy. I'm on an aisle seat. He's in the middle. I'm like, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> you should have looked. I kind of insinuated. You should have looked directly at him and went, do you smell pee? Because it's not me. <laughs> I mean, dude, shake that sucker. At the maybe, urinal. well, maybe he didn't want to ask you to move. He felt uncomfortable. So he peed himself you to, so to get me to move. Himself. Yeah, that's my guess. All right, so the last item we're going to review is another Amazon Black Friday special. It is the Dude Bomb Toilet Stank Eliminator. The Dude Bombs are made with a refreshing scent blend of lavender, cedar, lime, and eucalyptus. Hey. Dude Wipe sponsors a car, NASCAR. Same company? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, spelled the same. Backward right. C, U, backward C, three lines. Dude Wipes, that's... Well, these are Dude Bombs. You can't wipe with a Dude Bomb? <laughs> I don't like how we try it. Oh. So it yeah. says it creates a barrier that keeps odor in the toilet and instantly neutralizes stank in the air. Our stand-up... Pouch sits conveniently on the toilet and can be simply dropped into the bowl whenever nature calls for powerful odor elimination. Dude Bomb's odor destroying ingredients create an indestructible barrier. So go ahead with your bad self while our bombs neutralize your stank in the air and leave no trace of the crime. You stank? Stank. What the heck? I stank. Dude Bomb toilet stank. So could you do like you did with the Tide Pods on these things and pop them in your mouth? Nah. See how long you can live? So Austin Wayne has We know Austin Wayne has bad diarrhea. <laughs> oh god. And he gave it a one out of five. And he has some stank. He says the bombs bubble and the chemicals get back on you if there's any backsplash. This is from the Wait, United States. Are you States. supposed to throw them while you're sitting on the pot? <laughs> I think you're supposed to put them in there. I don't know. I would assume you put them in and wait a minute because... Do you need to, to the, wear a condom for protection? I mean, you probably need to wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wear it depends to protect your bottoms. You better hold your nuts. That's all I'm going to say. Mm. If you use these, read the package clearly. It states to not allow the chemicals to get onto your skin, though even after you let the bomb set in the bison and completely bubble through... It will still get onto your skin when you sit down. The bubbles pop and then the chemicals land on, on top of you. What the hell? <laughs> this is a is this an EPA super waste site? The chemical agent will get into your skin. You will inevitably have to wipe it off with a damp cloth, if able. You should <laughs> it just burned a <laughs> hole right through my anus. <laughs> said you still may break out in a rash. I'm assuming he broke out in a rash. The bombs also do not shield the smell. He says he's let multiple friends use these and they all agree. Multiple they, friends? <laughs> what kind of friend is this? Like, I want you to try it too. Well, for, for many generations in my house, there was a pack of matches for when you dropped the real bomb. <laughs> I don't mean dude bombs. I mean a real deuce bomb. No. You know, if he changed that D to a C, it would be a deuce bomb. Is that spelled right? 
D U C E. Is that a deuce? That's yeah. what I was. That's a deuce yeah. bomb. It exactly would be a deuce bomb, wouldn't it? Why do they call it deuce bomb? All right, so B3 Players says, Dangerous Fumes, don't purchase. Package says, don't inhale fumes. Beside the blue ring around the bowl, this product leaves behind. I found it very alarming to read the package and find a warning stating not to stand by or near the toilet while the package is dissolving in the water. Do not breathe in the fumes while the package is dissolving. I don't think this product is safe or should be used in the bathroom, which is not a well-ventilated room. The idea of fumes being released into the toilet just before I have to sit over the water is not a pleasant idea. I mean, how long do these fumes linger in the area? When is it safe to breathe? Do none of these people have exhaust fans? I know some people, builders still, chimp out and they just dump it to the attic. At least dump it to the attic. Good night almighty. I think it's just, it just sounds like the smell is overwhelming. The blue ring around the toilet, I read that in a lot of reviews. Um, JG gave it a one out of five. It says, overwhelming smell leaves blue ring in the toilet if it hasn't recently been cleaned. So what do these cost? The deuce bombs? The deuce these bombs. are anywhere between 14 and $24 for a pack. You know, they make these Clorox tablets you throw in the tank. They do pretty good. Let's see. It's 40 poops. I mean, pods. Or it could be poops. So, <laughs> well, if you're using them for poops, right? Yeah, but if you had to go really bad... So here's you, what I'm you would thinking. have to wait three or four minutes for the dude bomb to dissolve so the chemicals don't bubble up and burn your butt. Here's what I'm thinking. You drop your deuce, leave it in the toilet, and drop the dude bomb on the deuce. I mean, hopefully you don't have a floater because it could bounce back and hit you in the eye, right? And then you don't have to flush the toilet because this thing sounds like it's very dangerous. It'll just dissolve the dew and it'll save your septic tank. Well, so I'm not saying that this is true. I'm not advertising the product, but that's what I'm thinking. Won't it absorb the dew, the deuce, in the dude bomb? So MJ said these are snuggle scent pods. But he's the only person that says it smells well. I only read negative reviews. He likes the reviews. smell? Yeah. Like Erie said, it, sm it does not smell like cedar, eucalyptus, lavender, or lime. It smells like your average Porter John. Okay, there's a review from Mindy. Why is she using a dude bomb? Well, if you want your bathroom to smell like a porter potty, then this is the product for you. Hmm. The scent is very overpowering, and I'm not usually sensitive to scents. So, Mindy is obviously sensitive to scents. If she's trying to cover up the scent of the poo-poo, right? Mm -hmm. So, what kind of what kind of deuce is Mindy dropping? She says, even though that the deuce bombs were wrapped up separately, everything else in my Amazon box reeked of the scent and had to be aired out. I do not re recommend this product. It is overpowering the smell. It literally smells like a porta pod. Um. Everybody says it smells like a Porter John. She says, Stacy Johnson said, gave it a one out of five. Got these because her son loves their butt wipes, but these did not work. So they are dude wipes. She wishes she could give them zero Ew. stars. Ew. Martha bought them as a Christmas gift for her son. Smell was so overwhelming, it made them all nauseous, and they had to put the unopened <laughs> packages into sealed plastic oh containers Lord. and drive them to the Amazon return facility. I'm surprised the post office would take that. Um, Kamazoo Akabuzi said, gave it a one out of five. He was this, probably the U.S. Air Force might have dropped is, these on him in Iraq. This is not a translated one, too. Wow. This is from the United States. This product is incredibly toxic. The label itself encourages you not to inhale the fume, and almost everyone will use these in closed spaces. Yeah, because if you're crapping in the woods, you probably don't need a dude bomb. The smell is unnecessarily overpowering, and whenever it is in the pods, whatever is in the pods, stay in the toilet bowl blue after one use. The label also insists that you should not come into contact with the contents after the pod dissolves. But what about splashback? Yeah, I'm a, I would be a little concerned with splashback. 
Are you gonna have blue stains on your butt? I guess. That's not right. And then if you transfer the blue stain to your underwear when you pull your girdle up, is that gonna burn holes in your girdle? Oh yeah. So this week we got three gifts. We got the paper airplane 2.0, power up 2.0. We got the slim boxer girdle underwears, and we got the dude bombs. Are you a yes on the paper airplane or no? I'm a yes. I like paper airplane idea. I mean, when I was a kid, we tape on bottle rockets. I think I would. Airplane. I think I'd bump it up to the thirty dollar one and get the four point oh. Yeah, if you can remote control it, that's awesome. Yeah. So I'm gonna actually go a no on the paper airplane, but at least we got one yes. So on the slimming underwear, I'm a no. A hard no. Well, having looked at that guy that looked pregnant when he put <laughs> it on and his his breasties became like a 44 double D. You should get it. You need to choose, don't you? <laughs> you should get those, put them on and walk in the bedroom. Like, hey, honey, here I am. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> She'll just run into the closet and throw a bra at me. She'll start laughing. <laughs> She'll fall on the that floor laughing. Up, man. Are you a yes or no? No. And the dude bombs. No. No, I'm a no. I'm not I'm not putting anything in the toilet that's gonna burn my nuts. That's no. Just, that's not a happy thought. No. All right, so we had no racing. We did have racing. Oh, well, we did have racing. F one and F one. F one. It was about F one. F one championship in the Max Verstappen series. Yeah. Dude, that's so, F, I tried to watch the F one race and it's it's so rigged towards him. There was less passing in that than there was at Martinsville in the spring. Yes. That made Texas look exciting. What is that DPS zone? Is that where you can get a little boost? DRS zone? Don't pass. No, there was some. He's out of DPS or something like that. What does that mean? DPS. Do they have a boost button on their steering wheel? We need to talk to our manager, Robert, about this. I'm it sure doesn't make a, any sense. It's something they cheat with. F1 is rigged. F1 is no different than the WCW or what is it now? WWE. It's, it's wrestling. And look, wrestling's good because we all know it's fake, right? So if we all know F1's fake and we just accept it and they own it, then it'll be even better. Well, as I was sitting there bored watching the race, I started doing a little investigation and told Maxi Boy. Yeah, so I asked Jamie yesterday, I said, hey, what is... Um, Verstappen, Max Verstappen, who's his dad? Because, like, Verstappen... He looks kinda, like an arrogant like, douchebag. Have you noticed? He's kind of like the Ty Gibbs of F1. Yeah. Spoiled douchebag. Douche canoe. Whatever. I mean, that's, that's exactly what he looks like. So, Jamie did some digging. Max's dad was a Formula F1 driver, correct? Mm-hmm. And his grandfather was a former boxer. Yeah. And Max was racing go karts at, at an, as a nine year old, and and it's it's kind of a man Karen story. Two man Karens. Yeah. Multi generation man Karens. Daddy Verstappen and Grandpa Verstappen beat the crap out of some yeah. dude at the go kart. Well, here's track. the news article: Max's father and grandfather beat the shit out of the father of another go kart racer when Max did kart. Oh no, that was my text to Brad. That's not news. <laughs> That's me. What um? Here's from the news. After a 1998 incident at a karting track in which a man suffered a fractured skull, Verstappen and his father Franz. You say skull? Franz. Well, my wife's from Minnesota, uh, and she's Norwegian, so she says skull. skull. I think that's what you say when you drink vodka. Score. So they were found guilty in court of assault, but were each given a five-year suspended jail sentence after reaching an out-of-court settlement with the victim. That means they paid them off. Yeah. We got money and you don't. Yeah. Go buy yourself a Volkswagen Beetle. That would be, it's basically it would be like Kyle Busch going to the racetrack at Millbridge and Brexton getting beat by a plumber and his son and Kyle going over to the plumber beating the ever loving crap out of him and then paying him off on the back yeah. end. That's basically what a happened. lot of cash. Except you'd have to have Kyle's dad with him too. But you know, I think Kyle and Kurt weren't raised very wealthy. He just came by it naturally when he got the money. He acted like a man Karen. Oh, he's a hundred percent man Karen. Yeah. Or maybe he just, maybe that's just the, uh, 
You think it's an act? Per- yeah. Seems like a very nice family guy. Persona he puts on is the man Karen. That's his racer. So that's Persona. his Marvel character, man Karen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man Karen. The man Karen to the rescue. Get the fuck out of my way. I'm man Karen. Excuse so, me, I said the F word again. Sorry. <laughs> this is like fourth time this episode. They really? You know, I was gonna I was gonna start bleeping it out when you say it, but I can't figure out how to add a bleep. But it's easier to click the rated yeah, R. Exactly. So Yeah. You know what I always say, if if this ever offends anybody, we're truly sorry, but we don't force mm-hmm. anybody to listen. And we probably won't change. No. We're we're old dudes now. Yeah. We're past. I don't think you change any in, after like 30. I kind of tried to slow down with the F-bombs. I yeah. think I have actually. Oh, no doubt. Like compared to episode one and two? Or just real life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, you have, you slowed down in real life because you slowed down on the show. You started paying attention. So I think it slowed Start you down on the show. Well, that's a compliment. I mean, the, the preacher even mentioned it to you, noticing that you didn't use yeah, the F word as much. So. I was like, wow, you don't use the F words. And I said, what F word? I was trying to make him say it, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't say it. <laughs> so Dale Jr. goes to Florence Speedway. And races in the South Carolina 400. Apparently, I, di- I didn't know this, but grassroots racing uses the same rules as Indian F1. If you touch somebody, you're penalized and sent all the way to the back. So Dale Jr. is out there racing with 12-year-olds. Obviously, people who are inadequate drivers, they're not going to make it to the cup level. So you can't touch them? And Dale Jr. gets just barely touches, uh, what's his name, Max Matt Cox. Van I mean, Stupin? He, 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 Dale basically wrecked Max. So I, the first time I got it. Three laps to go. He gets into Landon Pimbleton, which really Landon gets into Junior and spins his own self out. But they send Junior to the back again. And Goes he still the back did twice. Tenth, yeah, he still it? finished ninth after ninth? going to the back twice with three laps to go. Huh. I don't know. I'm, I'm really thankful I didn't waste my money going. I wanted to go after North Wilkes where I wanted to go, but do you know what I I, I, I appreciate fe- with him? He's not a man Karen with all his money. Well, he didn't even complain about what happened. He didn't even say anything negative about it. I got a question for you. Did you listen to the Dale Jr. download? Yeah, with with Brian France. Yeah. What did you think of Brian France? Um. I'll be honest, it brought back a lot of good memories. Listening to it, like, look, The Car of Tomorrow was obviously a fail, but it brought good storylines out of it. Like, we only had it for a year. I mean, it came and it went. Yeah. If that's his biggest fail, we got the money on this. The sport grew. Yeah. Like, a million times. But what did you think of him personally, as a person? Because we've made fun of him a lot. Um, I can tell you right now, if I ever had an opportunity to go work for him, I would work for him in a heartbeat. That's exactly how I felt. Like He, he just, seemed like a nice guy. You know, firm, demanding, yeah. but he wants you to succeed. Kind of like, you know. That's what I mean. He just seems like a straight up dude. Like a really good person. Like I thought... I thought the whole episode was good. Do you think it's because he didn't go to a lot of races and didn't do a lot of interviews when he was the CEO that we had this misunderstanding about him? Yeah, but I kind of agree with his his stance. Like, if he's at the racetrack, then he's not doing what he needs to do to grow the sport. But I thought he was a total douchebag until I heard that interview. I did, too. I thought it was because of him not being at the track and things like that, it made me think he was kind of a douche canoe. But after listening to that episode, it just made me think, like, I don't know. I just realized how much good he did. You know, people can talk as much crap as they want. But I I tell you what I really liked is he did not go down the rabbit hole on Jeremy Mayfield. And he, he really took all credibility away from Jeremy Mayfield with his response. Yeah, basically it wasn't worth his time. Exactly. So if he would have argued it back and tried to get, you know give me his side of the story, it would have added fuel to the fire in a sense. It would have given credibility to Jeremy Mayfield. But because Brian France is like, no, it didn't happen. 
you know, I got no, I got no comment on that crap. Jeremy Mayf- Mayfield did not seem very sincere when he was on the Dell Junior download. You know, he wasn't ever even blue check mark check verified if, on Twitter. So. If it was twenty twenty, he'd still be counting votes. Oh, no doubt. That's probably why he hadn't been in a race car in a long time. He's still, yeah, counting, still votes. counting votes. He he thinks he was most popular driver. So, uh, what else we got? Ty Gibbs is going to go. The worst kept secret in the world. Ty Gibbs is going to the Cup Series, but I did not see it coming. He's going to drive the 54 in the Cup Series, not the 18. I didn't see it coming, but it made sense after the announcement because he's kind of developed, you know, his own persona in the 54. Yeah. Well, I mean, we talked the 18, they're going to put on, they're going to give the 18 a break. I don't know how long they didn't say, but. Notable drivers from the 18, Bobby Labonte, Dale Jarrett, Kyle Busch. So I think Ty Gibbs in the 54 is really helping set himself apart from those three guys. Do you think – I don't I don't want to sound too negative on Joe, Joe Gibbs Racing, but do you think m and might come back? No, I think Joe Gibbs Racing is going to be gone in a few years. Well, you know, we're set up for the same crap with rumor, Denny. Rumor is in the 2023. FedEx. Yep. FedEx and Denny. What ne- the heck? Next year, right? Yeah. Yeah, so next year, supposedly, next year is it for FedEx. So that's but two major FedEx sponsors. But does FedEx stay with Denny if Denny goes and races for 2311? Because Denny has shown a lot of loyalty to FedEx when he said, I would like to retire driving the FedEx car if that's possible. Well, I mean, I think in the current state, I don't think FedEx can afford. How many big sponsors are left? That's it, isn't it? I mean, yeah, as far as full-time. Shell with Logano. Yeah, but they're not primary. Like, there's no – I don't think there's any primary sponsor who holds the majority anymore. It's kind of a shame. I mean, remember back in the day you had Lowe's. Interstate Battery. Lowe's sponsored Jimmy Johnson and Charlotte Motor Speedway. Oh, I'd like to touch on Jimmy Johnson again, going to GMS Petty. If you want to touch Jimmy Johnson, you go right Well, I know. Not, <laughs> you just said you would like to touch not on his, Jimmy I Johnson. I don't want to ch- touch his chicken tenders or anything. <laughs> you said I want to touch on Jimmy Don- Johnson. The subject matter. You All know, right. subject is just empty. It's is in the like air. A pro- is that like a it's pronoun? Like, it's like an air bud. All right, what's your air butt on Jimmy Johnson? It's badass that he's partnering with Petty. I think it's awesome. And he's still going to be with Chevy. And I like the two drivers. New favorite team, dude. Do they, um, I'm buying a hat. Are they in alliance with HMS? I don't know. Let's look. Or RCR. I want to say they're in alliance with somebody. I thought it was an RCR alliance because Ty Dillon was over there tearing crap up, so they had to keep buying stuff from Richard. Now Ty's going to where'd he go? Uh, he's Rick racing Rare? with uh, not is it Rick Rare or is it Lejoy's team? Isn't he Lejoy's oh, yeah, yeah. teammate? Spire, Spire Motorsports. Yeah, he's going to elevate Spire to the next level. Ty Gibbs, not Ty Gibbs, Ty Dillon. Isn't he really ensuring that... Uh, they have to buy crap from Pop his Pop. daddy. Yeah. Pop Pop. So, Petty GMS is with Richard Childress. Yeah, but when's that end? I don't know. Here's a tweeter. Petty GMS will get engines built by ECR and have an alliance with RCR, but GMS already owned its building in Statesville, a building that had enough space for two trucks and two cup cars, so made sense for everything to be based in Statesville rather than welcome. That didn't answer a freaking question at all, did it? You must be on the Wikipedia. Got more. You must be on the Wikipedia. Space Karen. No, I'm on the Tweetar. Oh, the Tweetar. I thought Twitter was going to crash. It probably has. Anyway. Chevy. Elon Musk had like all those people walk out. I saw somebody had tweeted like, what happened last night? I thought Twitter was supposed to crash after all the employees walked out. And I was like, yeah, they didn't walk out because they realized you can't get unemployment if you get up and walk out. If you quit, you can't get unemployment. So they're going to let him just fire him? I think 33% of the staff or something like that's gone now. 
But then they all make like ten million dollars a year. They were charging thousands of dollars to verify people on the back end. So I'll verify you, but you got to Venmo me a thousand dollars. Here's something for race fans. Well, that's good. The Valo Adelaide 500 is December one to four. The what? Australian supercars. You know you can adjust your microphone so it's not behind you. <laughs> no, it's keeping it on my right near my left. What do you call that where your lips go together? Your face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> crease. Lip crease. <laughs> your See, face. I'm trying to talk out of the left side of my mouth. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Someone with OCD does these things. Oh. So if you haven't watched it, I watch it on YouTube, and sometimes it's live streaming. Oh, the supercars? Yeah, they're 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 off the chains, man. It's probably some of the best races I watched today. Their last race, Gold Coast, I think was what it was. It was over at Surfers Paradise is where they were racing at. But these guys send it into every turn wide open. Oh, they're balls to the wall. It's like man. forty Ross Chastains. Uh huh. Like constant. Nobody cares. And it's wide open. Beating and banging. It, this is you what, see when they go over those barriers on the turns, they're on one wheel. It's Xfinity on drugs. Yeah, on crack. Legal drugs. Legal crack. Yeah, called la la crack, lacrosse, lacroc, lacrac, lacroc. Is that like shoes? Isn't that a name of racers in F one? Lacroc, lacrac. Dude, I pay so little attention to F one. I mean. I can tell you, I don't have to watch F1 to tell you who's going to win. For well, Stafford, nobody else had to watch F1 to see who's going to win. He won 15 out of 22 races, and you want to tell me it's not rigged? Oh, it's rigged. There's no way it's not. Have you noticed he looks like a frog? He looks like Ty Gibbs. Like someone put his bottom chin on a vice and hit him over the head with a sledgehammer and his lips just popped out? Go through. Or stuffing. Your ball. You better watch out. You dad. think he's Nazi? Hey, his dad will whoop your butt. Well, and and his grandfather. I think they're like pop, Nazis. Pop, and pop, I, pop, pop, pop is gonna whoop your butt. As as everyone at work knows, I'm I'm part Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> You're not right, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> so so the Van Stupens might be coming after me. No, Van Stupen. That's Steppen. What is it? What is his name? Van Stipen? Verstappen. Verstappen. Max Verstappen. It sounds like a World War One ace fighting against he would never the make, Red Baron, doesn't he? He would never make it in NASCAR. No, he seems to... We couldn't pronounce it. Verstappen. Like, the announcers... Could you imagine Dell Jr. trying to say Verstappen? He can't even see, say Dingle better. I mean... Do you think when he waves, it's kind of like the little Hitler salute? We can't even say De Benedetto in NASCAR, so we definitely can't say Verstappen. I bet you this is how he says hi. No. <laughs> he says Heil instead. <laughs> he puts his hand up and says Heil. What else we got news-wise? Ryan Priest, did we talk about that? Oh, uh, yeah. Cole Custer's getting the shaft. I don't think Cole cares. But here's the question. He's probably getting paid the same. Does that mean Haas won the, lost the battle with Stewart? Because uh, Tony Stewart got his way. I think Cole will do better in the Xfinity series. Do you think he needs a few more years to make it to Cup? No. I just think that's where he maxes out at. And I also think when you're on a four-car team or a three-car team, what is Stuart Haas? Three? Four. Kevin, Eric, who are we missing? Cole. Cole. Briscoe. Briscoe, that's hey, it. So that's a four. big team. When you're on a four, three or four-car team, one to two cars get the shaft. But here's the thing. I think a If you're the only one without a win, are they going to invest in you? But think about this. Except Daddy runs Haas. Two-car teams always, not always, but two-car teams like Trackhouse seem to consistently have both cars running good more than four-car teams like Hendrix consistently have four cars running good. They usually have one dog, though. Exactly. Hendrick they might have three good cars and one dog. Yes, but not four. The same with Joe Gibbs. Or it could be like Roush and have no good ones. Actually, Joe Gibbs. Who's good? Denny? 
Uh, and Mr. bye bye, Mister Bye Bye. Joe's about run his company into the ground. Well, he's not a youngster. What is he like? Ninety nine years old. Well, you could say Joe's about run the country into the ground too. So. Wasn't he coaching? <laughs> he was coaching the Redskins he, we were, when they were wearing leather helmets, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. It was. He was around when first. No face bars. Was. No face masks. We went to. We went to see Chris Stapleton at. Um, Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Chris Stapleton, Dwight Yoakam opened up for him. You know who that is? I know the name. It's, a, it's He's an old school country dude, isn't he? He looks like Joe Biden. Jell. And he yodels. Jell. Yo, 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 yo. We got there and our, we didn't have the best. I remember. I thought yodeling was Swiss, we were not up, country. We were sitting up top because... I mean, it was an arm and a leg for seats. I went, it was just ridiculous what they charge for tickets nowadays. But me, my wife, and my son went. And I text Jamie when we got there. going, man, these seats are horrible. The sound was awful. Where was it at? What was the venue? Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Oh, yeah, that's known for sucky. Well, it wasn't so much the sound as it was Dwight Yoakam. Like, my son was even looking like, oh, man, this is horrible. Because Dwight Yoakam, you couldn't. Oh, you took your son there? Yeah. He's, he's a big Chris Stapleton fan. He play he plays a lot of that. that stuff I don't on know the guitar. any of his music. But um, once Chris Stapleton came on, even up high where we were at, it sounded really decent. So we it was a very good concert. I'm glad we went. We had a good time. But Dwight Yoakam slash Joe Biden is horrible. Chill. Yodi yodi yodi. Where's my applesauce? I just want to see Joe Biden get behind the podium and just start yodeling. I'd like to see Joe Biden in the Daytona 500. <laughs> We'd still be waiting on to count the cars. <laughs> One, three. Gentlemen, start your engines. Jill. What Repeat. Bu <laughs> what button, Jill? Jill, what do you say? Jill, my, I, I, my hearing aids aren't working. Wouldn't you like to go next to Jill and just put your hand near his hearing aids and then go, wink, <laughs> wink, wink. Or when he's talking into his mic and they're feeding him info in his ear, I'd I like it's breaking. I'm like, you want me? Because then he'll just start repeating you verbatim going, e, 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 o, e. Hey, maybe he should send some <laughs> dude bombs over to the Ukraine. Should we become lobbyists? We've talked about becoming lobbyists. <laughs> For dude bombs? For dude bombs. <laughs> Try to get the Defense Department to buy a bunch and drop them the in Russian toilets. <laughs> when the DOJ spends $1.3 billion on dude bombs. Would Putin complain? <laughs> What a whack of You're burning my army guy's balls. <laughs> <laughs> These dude bombs are horrible on the sack. <laughs> We're going to retreat from all of Ukraine. We hate the dude bombs. All right. So we did hotel reviews this week from our first stop. Yeah, so 315 miles. So we're we're going to do reviews. We're doing the Cannonball. Let's just recap. Now let's just say you have no clue when we're going to have our next episodes because if we get bored, there's going to be another episode. So we're um, we're doing the Cannonball run in February. February 6th, we're leaving, I believe, is the date. Taking the week off. And we we figured we need gas every 350 miles. From the Red Ball. Red Ball? Red, yeah, Red Ball Garage. Garage in Manhattan. So, 358 miles is uh, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Harrisonburg. Mm-hmm. Not Harrisburg. Uh, there's Scott's son, Harrison. Okay. I think that's where I we work we, with a guy. I with, thought we were in Pennsylvania. We work with a guy named Harrisonburg. Wow, you think they named the town after him? Is that Spanish? I think it is. Okay. It's Latino. He is? He could be. Christoph. Her Christoph Harrisonburg. <laughs> or is it Christoffenberg? Christoffenberg. So he's German. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Maybe he's German. With curly hair. All right. So we're going to talk about hotels we're not staying at because we can't stop for anything but gas. Because we're trying to do sub 40 hours. And I did this one, Days in in New Market, Virginia. It's a little north, but I did this just in case going through the mountains, getting to the Shenandoah Valley, used too much gas. And I went to an academy there, boarding school. 
because I should have sporting because store. I had too much fun as a child, and my parents didn't want to deal with my fun, so I got sent to an boarding all, school, an all girls boarding school. Yeah, well, no, they wouldn't have done that. <laughs> they knew better. <laughs> I was very into girls. The problem was they weren't, they weren't into me. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. So this is Stephanie Ackerson. She says, without a doubt, the worst place in the world. Now, I've been to Newmarket. It's not the worst place in the world. She's never been to the Beach House Inn. I think that's gone now. Maybe. It looked gone, but, you know. Well, our best western's gone. The Beach House Inn looked gone when we stayed at it two years ago. Yeah, that's year. true. It looked like a hurricane. That was hit this it. year. You realize that? It, is. it was. It was this year. It's crazy. That's 41 episodes ago. <laughs> well, Stephanie says the rooms are extremely dirty and unkept. When asking for a refund for the terrible rooms, the gentleman only refunded me for the night I had yet to stay and not the night I had experienced. Well, you still stayed the you night. You stayed there. Why didn't you check out early? Yeah. Gentlemen, uh -oh. I don't think he's a gentleman. Gentlemen. Told me that they didn't check the rooms all the time. So what? They, <laughs> wow. So they might not know how dirty it is. And also said that maybe the person prior to us had pets resulting in a dirty room. So they don't clean it. He's admitting they don't clean it. It's probably a pet-free room, too. And she says there's no way a pet would have caused all that. Well, is she a dog all expert? Of what? All of what? Is she a canine trainer? But I need to know what I'm looking at. Well, she says the door, the lock on the door was non-existent. It looked like someone had peed on the chair multiple times. Now, I don't know what someone a, or something. I don't know what a multiple peed on chair looks like. Do you? I would think a human would pee more quantity, like more gallons of water or pee urine than a dog. I've but, never, I've never bottled a dog pee and bottled. Are a these human people pee third world that stayed before her and just thought the chair you peed on? Well, maybe their legs were broke and they couldn't get up out of the chair, so they just peed. That's possible. Or it was Joe Biden. Maybe watching daytime maybe, shows. No, so it says the lock was non-existent. Somebody broke in, which broke the lock off. Beat the crap out of this dude, broke both his legs, left him sitting in a chair, and he, and he had himself? to pee himself because housekeeping doesn't check daily, so he might have been there for a few days but waiting. Is changing your underwear part of housekeeping job? If your legs are broken and you can't walk, <laughs> then well, at least they can call 911. You can take Interstate 78 to Interstate 81, which we will be doing, and then getting on Interstate 40 to go all the way to California. That's basically our route. So I guess the mafia could drive there to break your legs and make you pee in your chair. Is that a mafia thing? I mean, the Godfather never showed a guy peeing this, in his chair, did this he? This lady vacuumed the floor. That's what she says. <laughs> Where did she get a vacuum? Well, I mean, it was dirty. And the guy said they don't have time to check it every day. So maybe he just said, hey, hey, here's my vacuum, Stephanie. Stephanie Karen, you go right ahead. So she, she vacuumed the dirty floor. Light panels had fingerprints on them. Well, that happens, okay? Is that what you call the light cover over the switch? A light panel? Maybe. Has to be. How dirty are your hands if you're leaving fingerprints? Did you oh. clean your butt without toilet paper? Finger I mean, all you gotta do is put your kid in the back seat of your car and you have fingerprints on the window. That's true. So fingerprints happen easily. Shower curtain disgusting. Pillows as flat as the bed. They should be embarrassed to offer these rooms to guests for the price of 115 a night. I would expect more for a 45 a night hotel. Hold how, it. What is much, it? How much was this hotel? 45 or 115? Huh. So here's what I'm going to guess. I oh, think, so she's saying a $45 hotel, she would have expected more than what this $115 hotel was? No, I think Stephanie went full Karen mode here and jacked the price up from 45 to 115 you in think, the first sentence. And you think forgot. Karen is her middle name? Oh, Stephanie Karen? Then in the second sentence, she forgot that she had added to the original price. And so she forgot her lie from sentence to sentence. How do we know she didn't pee on the chair? I'm, I'm thinking it's a very... She stayed in it one night. Someone dropped some dude bombs in the toilet and it freaked her out. So she oh. went and peed on the chair. Huh. 
Then she says, then when I was getting my stuff out, a woman came to tell me at the manager's request that I had to be out in 10 minutes when obviously I was the one leaving and not wanting to stay here. No one needed to tell me that I wasn't welcome. Okay, Karen. She's a Karen. She's a Karen. She's just a just a flat out Karen. It's a day's in. What do you expect? Which is owned by Wyndham. Yep. And yeah, just for shits and giggles, I went with Days In in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Heck yeah. That's two days in. Grace, how do you pronounce that last name? I was gonna say Huff, but that's my dyslexia screaming me. It's Herf. Is that Herf? I, I saw Huff. H U R F F Harf. I see Herft. Herf. H U R F. Mine's smudged. You think she's the del- think she's related <laughs> Is to yours not smudged like mine? No. So I must have touched her. Oh, you touched it when you got us water. I touched her when I got water. She turned Huff into Herft. Oh, geez. Yeah, it's got the enemy's name yeah. on it. Mm. I won't give them a free plug. No, but if you have one of their pieces of equipment, it's probably going to break. Oh, yeah, because they have a lot of warranty problems. Tons of warranty problems. Yep. And it rhymes with your nuts. <laughs> 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 you need a Daikin or a Goodman yes. eating an air system in your home, period. And flat out, the mini splits can't be touched. Oh, no. Just balls to the wall. Awesome. All right. But anyway. Herft. Grave turfed. Grace Herf. Do you think she believes in Grace? Herft? I doubt it. Yeah. I don't know. Not she's, with a last name like She's Herft. Von Stupin's cousin. Her Grace Herft. She gave it a one out of five on Google. This was the absolute worst day I've ever had. Not only do none of the benefits on the sign, website, and Google profile actually exist, such as a working pool, breakfast, flushing toilets, air conditioning, and many more. Why didn't she give us the many more? I'm curious. You've Flushing toilets seems like it would just be a... It's just normal. Mandatory thing. Yeah, I would think so. So they had outhouses, or did the toilets just not flush? Well, this is you, if Shenandoah did, Valley, so... Yeah, couldn't... I mean, I could see an outhouse. This is close to the interstate. If whoever's driving has the co-pilot look over to our right as we're headed south on 81, we could probably see the hotel and gauge whether the toilets are working or not as we fly by at 79 miles an hour. Well, if we get gas right beside this, we can just run under their awning, get out and pee. And when they say, what are y'all doing peeing in the front of our hotel? We could say, your toilets don't flush. Here's a fun fact. I did look (laughs) at gas stations. One near the hotel is called Sheets. I sheets myself. (laughs) And my toilet don't flush. <laughs> Maybe we should go to Sheets. Voila. We definitely should not go to Taco Bell drive through while we're doing our cross country run. We're gonna have to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We're gonna. I'm gonna. Have, I'm gonna Google what food gives you calories but does not make you poo. It's gonna say Gatorade, isn't it? Reese's. Dude, you gotta pee though. And we got to hold it for 300, 350 I can, miles. I could barely make it an hour and a half podcast. <laughs> Maybe we could pop the hatchback <laughs> and stand. <laughs> get a harness I and just, pee out the back. I leave my seatbelt on, roll over to the right <laughs> or left if I'm driving. You'll have to steer. I can work the pedals wow. while I pee out the door and you can steer. So we're going to take pictures of our... Of me peeing out the door. Well, no, well yeah. I, I don't know if I can do that. We need, do we need a camera? So you're going to, you're going to be driving, dash cam? driving, live streaming, and taking a picture of me leaning over the passenger door with my seatbelt on. No, we do have pee. cruise control. Okay. Well, that still doesn't make it any... We could each take a side of the car and pee out that side in cruise control. <laughs> As we die. The guy behind us is like, what, what is the this? hell? We just, dash cam so, <laughs> be a TikTok. We <laughs> <laughs> white dudes peeing out of a Prius, doing eighty miles an hour on the Cannonball Run. Yeah, <laughs> we'll just pee on the side of the highway, man. It takes three minutes. That's true. I pee a lot, so so she goes on to say the toilet doesn't flush, but we knew that after numerous tries. 
The hotel is terrible and disgusting. I had roaches, too. And even putting that aside for $109 a night, everything online claims the prices are 45 to 75 Here we go with that 45 again. Maybe you shouldn't have checked in. The walls had weird stains and paint chunks. Ew. Gross. This is... They're probably owned by the same people. She well, probably weird. had a pissy chair, too. But what I've come to find out is weird stains is usually doo-doo. Paint chunks is cheap management. Yeah, these are... Um, Toilet not flushing is no maintenance. We're in Virginia, right? That's still on the east coast. Yeah, mid-Atlantic. Hmm. They're, they're considered Southern. I don't there. understand the $45 a night thing. Well, the other lady did it, and she had a totally different name. Stephanie Caron Ekison yeah. and Gracie Huff. Herf. 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 Yeah, but it's <laughs> 45 to 75 is a heck of a gap. All right. $45 won't get your room anywhere, even at the hey, here's your sheets. Wyndham Resorts. Your sheets are unwashed. The sheets were unwashed. Yes, yeah, so she stopped at the gas station. <laughs> no, they sponsor. Which car does sheets sponsor? Isn't it an Xfinity car? Does it? Isn't, Isn't it S H E T T Z? Sheets on myself. Is that a gas station? Yeah, that's the gas station yeah. you're talking about. Were you sheets on yourself? Oh, it's S H I T Z. No, that's Jeez. shits. Shits on yourself. <laughs> oh, I, I think the family would. That may have been their original name, and they said, hold it. In Germany, that means awesome, but here in America, it, doesn't it mean, means poo-poo. It means poo-poo. Yeah. Hmm. So the sheets were uncovered. What? Unwashed and covered in hair. <laughs> that's what it was. Dude, where are all these people losing their hair? I mean, come on. I'm bald, man. Don't ask me. I, I don't have that problem. Mine all fell out already. But th th she says there was paint and other kinds. Of there was a hole in the wall next to the bedstand table. Well, that's for people to watch you. <laughs> and then there was a splotch of pasta sauce. I don't think it's pasta sauce. I'm sorry. It's blood. Yeah. Or is it brown? Well, she... Well, she, or she says, or some matter of that sort. So she's still claiming some type of sauce. She's hoping it's food, but it's not. I'm telling you, lady, it ain't food. <laughs> well, here's where it looks. She goes totally Karen here. The TV uh, didn't TV. play any of the shows I was wanting to view. I can't what? believe that TV would do that to her. What? How you gonna blame the TV? It ain't the TV's fault. Stay away from this end. Okay, Karen. Now, because we're going to talk Van Stopensteimer, look at this guy's name. Next review. Super 8 by Wyndham, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Mike Van Hooten. Kind of like Hoff, Hoff, Hoff. There's a lot of Germans in the Shenandoah Valley, isn't there? Van Hooten. Is look it? at the next guy. Lysander. Lysander. What is going on? Do they allow... You know, I'm a quarter Jew. Am I allowed in the Shenandoah Valley? Do we have to do a DNA test to get into the Shenandoah Valley? We'll just drive fast. We're in a Prius, Brad. <laughs> we'll drive as fast as the Prius. Semi fast. Just don't smile at anybody. A <laughs> little over the speed limit. Don't make eye contact and you'll be okay. You think you'll get pulled over by like Sheriff Pusser going, is that a Jew shit next to you, Brad? Can I see your ID? <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. And you're going to have to say no. He's just wearing his hat backwards, you Stupid man. Let's say ID. That's racist. I don't have no ID. <laughs> <laughs> I identify as someone without a license. <laughs> I identify as somebody about to pull away, and you're going to not chase me. Officer, can you give me my pronoun for my license? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir. <laughs> so we're going to tweet out pictures of our Prius, our right. badass. Prius with speed. It has a rear diffuser like the next gen car. And a trailer hitch. <laughs> trailer. I'm going to take that down. It might cost us a few miles per gallon. You should get the nut sack to hang on. <laughs> That'd be so redneck. <laughs> a little Prius <laughs> with a nut sack. I bet some people will talk about it. <laughs> with the cannonball run sticker on the side. See the shining sea. You could put the nuts hanging from the travel or the hitch and then you can get a bull tail like a tail from a bull coming off the back 
So if anybody out there hasn't seen the Cannonball Run, it's a movie. You need to see it with Bruce Willis. I can't remember. No, no, that was uh, Ronald. Ronald Reynolds, right. Ryan Reynolds. No, Burt Reynolds. That's his name. <laughs> I was even a young buck when that came out. Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Jill. 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 I remember that movie. Jill. Can you cue it up on the net of Flixies? <laughs> we gonna make America great again, Jill. I think I think Joe Biden listens to us, Brad. I think Bo. he's one of our listeners. On that map, did you see that Delaware dot? That's Bo. That's Bo. Anybody named Bo is redneck. It's probably Jill. Jill and Bo? I think Jill listens. You think Jill listens? Oh, yeah. I think she's mad because we <laughs> said we'd rather hang out with Obama Biden. Did you see... Um... No. No, that's not his <laughs> name either. Damn it. <laughs> what was his first name? <laughs> what was Obama's first name? Barack. Bar Barack. That's Barack it. Hussein Obama. I think Biden would be jealous that we'd rather hang out with Barack. What's Joe's middle name? Karen. Does he have a, does he have a middle name? Applesauce. He's Joe Applesauce Biden. <laughs> He was around in 1883. I think he fought in the Civil War. <laughs> He's a veteran <laughs> on both sides. He claimed to have been offered a scholarship to the Naval Academy, but they can't find any evidence. He graduated from a historical black college. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think HSBC meant that bank in Pittsburgh. Uh, Harris Tweeter Bank. Harrisburg. Harrisonburg. Tweeter. Harrisonburg. You know, we're going to go to Harrisonburg <laughs> and Harrisonburg. What's the capital of Pennsylvania? Harrison. Is it Harrisonville? Steelers. We might need to figure this crap out if we're going to drive across the country. That's how we're going to learn, man. Boy, this is going to be like an 120-hour trip. <laughs> Where are y'all at? Do you know how bad down we're going to be when we get lost in Butte, Montana? <laughs> Why are y'all in Idaho? Oh my God, they're going to accuse, they're going to drug test us when we get back. Our bosses are going to go, really? It took you a week to get there? You had to sell the car at a pawn mart and then fly back? Seven days to get across America? Why are y'all in Toronto a week later? Why did it cost you $6,000 to get to LA in a Prius? How y'all ended up in Central America? <laughs> We're going to be in Miami in three days and be like, hey, I think we went the wrong way. Hey, boss, I think we went the wrong way somewhere. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So we're back to Mike Von Halpen. <laughs> like heavy smoke. This is just a month ago. Look at that. A month ago. He did. Look. On Google. He tried to go that zero star route. He did That's one it. slash five, and then he did zero stars, but doesn't look like it's a 50. one out of 50. Yeah. Yeah. Makes it even worse, though. So, one so out of 50 is worse than one Mike out of Mike Van Houten, you really F that one up. First room had two roaches in the bathroom. That's it? That's it? That in, Geor nothing. in Georgia, that's a five-star hotel. That comes with That's everybody. the Regency. One of the two beds weren't made. Room stunk like heavy smoke. Okay. non-smoking room front desk upgraded us to a double queen room hey. where we found blood on the bed cover that happens a cigarette burn in the top well, that's and, why you burn yourself and middle you sheet and another alive not live it's alive <laughs> roach we saw a roach alive. on the bed and a dead one in the bathroom i thought the bathroom already had two live ones oh that was the other room that was when they had one king oh. now they got two queens spoke with others staying in the hotel who had the same issues in their rooms. When you notify Wyndham because their name is on the hotel, they just refer you back to the Super 8 who ignores the issues and basically calls you a liar. Good things, pitchers don't lie. We'll never stay at the Wyndham Hotel again because of this. And you know what? There were roaches in his pitchers. Oh, he had legit roach pitchers, huh? No, they look like the end of a joint that you don't smoke because you don't have a roach clip. Oh, those kind of roaches. Yeah, I think this guy was a pothead. They left two roaches in the room and he's pissed? That means some rich people were there before him. I don't know. Then we got Josh Lysander. This is like Josh, our friend Josh? Yeah. Josh Lysander. Lighthouse Motel in Harrisonburg, Virginia. So I mapped this. I can't quite figure out why it's the Lighthouse Hotel. It's like 
300 miles from the ocean. I was wondering. Well, maybe they, before the platonic shift. They were oceanfront? Yeah. <laughs> Could be. I mean, didn't think of that. There are some rivers around there. Back when they had river boats, did they need lighthouses for the... No, you were on... You had land on both sides. Yeah, with the dino, back around the dinosaur time, they had a lighthouse there. Oh, okay. That's or was that it, just cavemen dragging their knuckles and lighting fires? Well, Virginia fires? has a beach. Yeah, it's called Virginia Beach. <laughs> so... There's also a colonial beach in Virginia. I've been to both. Which one's nicer? They both kind of suck. Yeah. Went, They're boardwalks, cement in really Virginia impressed. Beach. What's the deal with cement boardwalks? It's called a boardwalk for a reason. You put boards there. I didn't go to the boardwalk. We just hang out, hung out on the beach for a day. I like the beach. My wife would rather go to the mountains. Yeah, I got the same problem at my house. Well, yeah, I think we've had this discussion. I'll run down to the beach and surf. By yourself? Yeah, while they go to the theater and watch movies. So anyway, the Lighthouse Hotel Motel Harrisonburg is a one out of five, according to Lysanda. Josh. Terrible. They don't fix anything wrong with the rooms. The stove didn't work. The carpet was in shambles. There were bed bugs. The doors warped from police kicking in so many times, and the doorknob is a pop lock and not a traditional turn lock. What? What's a pop lock? I don't know. To be honest with you, I think I copied and pasted the wrong review. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and read it. <laughs> Don't stay here at any cost. Go down the road to the Economy Inn. At least there you get what you pay for. Well, they're also owned by... Larry Simpson. <laughs> Larry Simpson. Wow, they, he actually calls out the owner. <laughs> is a pop the owner manager, Larry Simpson, is a pot-bellied slumlord. And all him and his nasty family do as far as work is snoop through your stuff when you're gone and take what they want. Awful place. If I could give it zero stars, I would. Wow, that was a good accidental taste. How did you manage to do that? I don't. I was looking at one and pasted something else. Well, you know. At least you pasted a decent one, though. Here's what happened. I got a work-related email Sunday night last night. That's our day off. Three off. But I went and responded. Sunday night. It's your fault. It did. It threw me off. Because I went to work mode. I forgot what day it was. Then I realized, because I got two different laptops, I got the podcast laptop and the work laptop, I realized I was on the wrong laptop. So I got confused. So oh, anyway, God. you know what they say. You got to know where you're going. <laughs> and you know there. where you're holding. Know when to fold them. You got to know where you're going. Know to when there. to go. I always thought they said you have to know where you're going to get there. Oh, did I combine know where you're going with a you Kenny, can't, Kenny Rogers song? You can't finish till you start. That's true. It doesn't end till it begins. And, you know... The best time to start is when you wake up. That's usually when I start. <laughs> hmm. See, I can make posters for a living. You could. <laughs> Were those be motivational or demotivational? How'd they be neither? Inspirational. I've got I had someone give me as a gag gift a, a non-inspirational poster. Some anal plugs. Well, you know, they like that little rowing thing where there's 10 guys rowing. The rich kid sport. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where rowing. they got those funny little canoes rowing. that aren't canoes. Is it called rowing? I think so. Oh. Boating. No, I think that's just think any it's boat. Called, it's called rowing. No, they got those paddles and those seats to go up and down like you're yeah. pumping. That's just competitive. Right? And there's somebody going, what do they scream? Go. Pull. Go. Ho. Ro. Heave. They always got the little I know. megaphone. Heave. Skull? Are they singing oh. skull? Heave. Cheers. Ho. Hi -ho. Cheerio. Hi -ho. It seems like a very British sport. Rowing? Is that really what it's called? <laughs> um, yeah. They got those long 50-foot little teeny weird canoes. It's got to be called rowing. Is it called rowing? What else would you call it? Well, that sounds... Kayaking? Cool. I mean, I know how to row a boat on the pond and go fishing, but that's rowing too, <laughs> if you got a rowboat. Yeah, but not competitive. Skiffing? <laughs> that sounds like something totally different. <laughs> Skiffing. That's so like rowing. World Record Rowing Championship. Are they sitting on the boat with 10 people? Rowing. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's what I'm talking about. I completely forgot. It's an Olympic sport called rowing. 
Hey, I told you it was called rowing. Look, just because my math is bad, my English is not great, my geography sucks. I know my Olympic sports. So this guy, I'm doing two reviews, one very positive and one very negative. And this is the negative one. They gave it two out of five, though. It says, and this is Harrisonburg review on niche.com. Two out of five. Our family has suffered and was fired for the reason of an escape goat. And now that was has happened, we've had a hard time being able to find something to replace it. Now, it confuses me. <laughs> the goat got Are out? they a scapegoat or did a goat escape? It says they escaped goat. That's what it says. Yeah, their goat got. So, this so their entire family was, watched one goat? Was fired for a goat, the goat escaping. And they're, now they're having a hard time replacing the goat they lost? Is that what they're saying? Yes. So in Harrisburg, if you find a goat, it, it belongs to a family who is just, their whole life has ended basically over this goat getting it. <laughs> okay. So here's the positive review on Niche. It's a four out of five. The police is usually there when needed. What? That's positive? Because the goat got out cop's not busy anymore that's positive he's already given up he's not even looking for this goat no more i don't know you know they'll steal your rabbit but i don't think they'll steal your goat <laughs> they'll kill you they'll shoot you for your rabbit i kill shoot your you dead kill your, your ass dead your rabbit so but not your goat we will also not be eating at the Brick House Tavern, which, according to the review, it's a pizza place in Harrisonburg. But it, it's a tavern. Isn't that bar food? Like cheese sticks and fried mushrooms? It says it's possibly the worst pizza you can get in Harrisonburg. Saggy, tasteless pizza. Saggy or soggy? Soggy, saggy. Whichever one you want to go it's with. It's also a dirty environment. Both the tables and menus were sticky. It's saggy, then. Is this where they got the pizza sauce, the pasta sauce they slammed on the wall? Yep. Service-wise, our pizza slipped off the metal thing. <laughs> it was served on and ended up on the table and floor. <laughs> we had only eaten one slice. A competent manager would have provided a replacement pizza immediately. Well, who dropped it? They had already eaten it, one slice. So that it sounds me. like they did. They dropped it. But there's some... Have you noticed there seems to be a lot of Karens in this town? Yeah, but man, Karen's woman. You want Karen's? a new pizza because you dropped it? Well, you knock look it what over. they told her. Instead, we were told only some of it went on the floor; the rest went on the table. Okay, I guess they scooped it off the table, and and then they say, "I kid you not." <laughs> we did not eat the pizza, obviously. I kid you not. But we were charged for it. A poor excuse for a restaurant. There are several decent pizza places in Harris Harrisonburg. And a couple of exceptional ones. Don't bother with this one. I won't be returning or recommending it. Quite I the think, opposite. I That's TripAdvisor. I think um, we should go go to the... Well, we can't because we don't have time. But I think if you're in Harrisburg, you should definitely go check out the Brickhouse Tavern because Karen will not be there. Saggy and tasteless, she will not be there. It was actually rated like a 4.2 when I looked at it. So saggy Karen had tasteless pizza. So you might want to dirty him. You might want to sub another word for saggy Karen. <laughs> that that might saggy Karen. So that's even worse. Maybe <laughs> please Karen fix whatever's sagging and soggy. <laughs> she can deal with the man, the man girdle. So and then last but not least. Because I'm a quarter Jew, <laughs> Einstein Brother Bagels is there. And this is a man, Karen, that reviews this. There's just Karens all over this place. Are we eating in the car? Yeah, because we ain't eating at any of this place. <laughs> this guy calls it a train wreck. And this is on Yelp. No greeting. No eye contact. No thanks. Is he saying no thanks because I didn't look at him when he walked in? He's mad. I asked for a mini bagel that was stacked in a jar on the counter. It was inedible. When I complained to the cashier, she informed me that I asked for a dog bagel. <laughs> what a total idiot. What a total idiot. Brad is laying on the floor choking. 
He didn't see that one coming. <laughs> oh, no, I was trying to take a drink of water. <laughs> when I pointed out that there is no label on the jar whatsoever, <laughs> nothing that indicates that this is made of for canine consumption, she just said that she thought I had bought it for my dog, which makes sense to me. She just wanted to see him. He just... Then he says, he quotes himself, God damn it, did you see me come in here with a freaking dog? Oh, I'm dying. These people are total idiots. Selling bagels can't be that hard. Apparently well, it can be. Well, dude, you're a total man, Karen. Apparently it can be that hard. <laughs> you're drooling. <laughs> or is that coming out of your nose? Oh, my oh. God. So, evidently, we have no racing to speak about next week. Oh, man. I oh, know. We got super... It's tears, man. We got just... super cars next week. I'm trying to do the closing, which Brad usually does, because he's uh -huh. crying I'm and crying, and his nose is running, because the guy ate a dog bagel. <laughs> <It's> just a <laughs> dog biscuit. <laughs> wow. So, what will we talk about next week? Super, uh, super cars. I guess we're reading more reviews. Let's read Black Friday reviews. Like, I wonder where our next stop is going to be. Is that Bristol? Is that another 350 miles? I don't know. That's where your hotel is. Did you just from. say we're going to do black reviews? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Black Friday reviews. Oh. Fights. I was going to say. You're fights have to... happening. <laughs> wow. Because you know on Black Friday, fights happen. People get mad. Oh, yeah. They'll beat the snot out of each other at Walmart. <sighs> Man. Um, for for like a TV that's ten dollars less than it was last week. I'm just imagining that guy going <laughs> eating a damn dog. I don't. I he can gets, see. Him. He's like, give me one of these treats, right? <laughs> thinking it's like I a want snack. the mini bagel. <laughs> thinking it's like a snack, dude. I've <laughs> seen those. Eating it, going, this thing tastes horrible, lady. <laughs> like, I, I've seen it's them. a dog biscuit, you idiot. There's an Einstein Brothers bagels in was it Marietta? They're obviously dog treats, even though they, they're tiny. They look like bones. What would make you think that that is for oh. you? Oh, I'm dying. That was killing me. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure out what we're going to talk about next week. Oh, let's let's figure out what those levers are on the Super V8 Australian oh. cars. How much you already knew? Well, I believe they're non-biased. They're biased braking systems for drifters. That's how they go around the corners faster than ever. We'll talk about, let's imagine what it'd be like on an Xfinity car. When is the, no, that's two weeks. The championship Super 8 car oh, yeah. race is in two weeks. So we'll be talking about that after that happens. Jeff Clark put out on the teardown that they're going to be getting rid of stage racing at road courses. That's the rumor, at least. Maybe they should get rid of some road courses. Yeah, I'm good. Just get rid of the whole race. That'd be an off weekend. Yeah. Give the guys a break on Easter. Yeah. Let's not run the Bristol Dirt Race on Easter. All right. That's all I got. You got anything all else? Right. Oh, I do have some. We have put most of our shows on YouTube. Yes. We yes. want to live stream while we're doing the Cannonball Run. We need 50 subscribers. 50 subscribers. So if you listen and have not subscribed on YouTube, please... It's race car spelled backwards on YouTube. Just go find our channel. I will definitely We're not even asking you to watch it. It's just a picture of Daryl flipping the bird at Kyle Bush. Yeah. And our show. And our show. But you know, if do us a great favor, subscribe to it, and that'll get us to where we can live stream on YouTube while we're doing all of 79 miles an hour, <laughs> getting 50 miles to the gallon, traveling across America doing the cannonball run. For probably 50 hours. I'm hoping it's less than 40, but we're going to get, I think it's going to take us 52 hours. Let's go. Let's make our predictions now and then we'll come back in February and see who is the closest. So I'm going to go 52. Yeah. I'm going to stick with that too. 52 hours. So we got 10 stops at 10 minutes a piece, two hours of stopping. So I'm going to go so 42, less than 45. Let's just do over under. All right, I'll take over 45. I'm going to do less than 45. All right. I'm good with that. Less than 45 hours. And still. You say less than Kurt, I say more than Kurt. I'm, yeah, basically. Or was that Ty? 
Kurt. Kurt die. No, I'm not a Ty fan. Not either. Maybe Ty should get the Tide car. Can we get Procter and Gamble back and get sponsor? the dude bombs? <laughs> yeah, dude bombs. Is that he is a dude bomb. DB. Let's lay off him for a few weeks. Yeah, we'll get back on it in February. Or next week, season two. <laughs> Could be next week. Who knows? Episode 42. Hey, next week, episode 42. Wait, Ty Dillon. Yeah. This week was like... Round but piece. he's going to be Noah Gregson 42 next year, right? Yeah. We're just going to be GMS fans. Yeah, GMS, totally. We're there. So, what do you usually say at the closing? It's all on you now, Brad. Oh, yeah. I didn't print yeah. off our cheat sheet. Thanks huh? for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. Make sure you check us out on Spotify. Rate us. Don't forget to rate us. Don't forget to... You didn't say your special word Twitter. today. I got Putin in. I did say wackadoodle. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to have to listen to the episode and find the wackadoodle. I said it right after you said Putin. Oh. I was, I was so Putin about the dude bombs being dropped on the Ukraine. So make sure you follow us. Uh, subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a review. Check out our website. It's racecarbackwards.com. And go follow us or subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And that's all I got. Jamie. That's it, guys. All right. Y'all have a great week. And happy have a, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Have a happy Thanksgiving. A happy Turkey Day. Enjoy it. I will. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thanks for listening to Race Car Spelled Backwards.